Welcome back to Learn Radiology, everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about astrocytomas. Astrocytomas can be divided by three grades. There are the diffuse low-grade astrocytomas, which are grade two by WHO. There's the slightly higher grade anaplastic astrocytomas, which have more aggressive histologic and imaging features. And then there's glioblastomas, which are the grade four astrocytomas. As you move down the spectrum into the higher grade tumors, what you're going to see on imaging is more enhancement, more mass effect, and more edema. So you can use those features to try to make a guess about which kind of grade tumor that you're looking at. Here we'll start with a case. This is a 73 year old woman. She had a seizure while traveling. Here you see a couple of images. On the left, we have an axial flare image. Here you see a little bit of fullness of the left medial temporal lobe here. On T2, it's a little bit challenging to make out. Maybe you don't see much at all. Here you see, again, on a coronal flare, a little bit of fullness of the temporal lobe. You see the sulcus here next to the perihippocampal gyrus is filled in. The temporal horn, you're not really seeing much of it there because of mass effect. Here you have very little enhancement. You can hardly uh, make out this tumor on the T1 post-contrast imaging. So in this case, what you're dealing with is a grade two diffuse astrocytoma. These are the most well-differentiated of the astrocyte malignancies. It's about 10 to 15% of astrocytomas. Uh, unlike this patient, the patients tend to be young adults in their third or fourth decades of people in their 30s and 40s. They have an intrinsic tendency to progress to other tumors. The treatment is uh, surgery to remove as much of them as possible. The common locations where you'll see these are in the frontal and temporal lobes. Uh, the deep gray structures and thalamus and basal ganglia are going to be a small proportion of them. On imaging, you're going to see exactly what we saw in this case, an iso to slightly hypo-intense lesion to gray matter, a slightly hyper-intense lesion on T2, you can sometimes have little cysts, calcifications, or enhancement, but those are relatively rare for these grade two tumors. For our next case, we have a 32-year-old man with left-sided tingling and confusion, gradually increasing, and now he has sensory loss. We'll start off with a CT. On the CT, what you'll see is centered in the right basal ganglia and insula. You have this relatively well marginated low density mass. You have mass effect, you see a little bit of midline shift where the third ventricle and uh, septum pellucidum are deviated off to the left. Uh, so you're concerned that there's a tumor there. So you want to go ahead and get an MRI. Here's your MRI. You have a T2 image on the left here. Uh, so you see again a relatively well circumscribed mass in the right basal ganglia and insula. Here you have diffusion. You're not seeing, uh, you're not really able to differentiate it from the adjacent brain tissue. So um, maybe it's not too, too dense cellular material. Here we have pre and post contrast images. So on the left, this is a pre contrast T1. Here's your post contrast. So you can see the vessels are enhancing. Maybe you have a couple of vessels uh, closely adhered to this tumor or maybe associated with it. If you look in the center, you definitely have a little bit of faint enhancement, but it's kind of hazy, not that well defined. That's pretty typical for these kind of tumors. Here you see a coronal reformat of that same post contrast image. Again, you see some hazy internal enhancement, but you don't have a very avid enhancement. And again, you have relatively well defined margins for this particular tumor. Here, what we're looking at is a grade three astrocytoma or an anaplastic astrocytoma. These are diffusely infiltrating astrocytomas that can have areas of, of focal anaplasia. This makes up about 25% of astrocytomas. Like the lower grade astrocytomas, they can occur in the frontal and temporal lobe. You can get them throughout the hemispheric white matter. You can also get these in the brainstem or spinal cord, or, although that's going to be more rare. What you're going to see is features that are similar to the grade two tumors. An iso to hypo intense mass on T1, that's bright on T2 or flare and then you make it a little bit of focal or patchy heterogeneous enhancement on your post-contrast imaging. Finally, we're going to take a look at a 59-year-old woman with headache and behavioral change. 
Here again, we have a CT. What you'll see is the findings are somewhat more dramatic than on the prior CT. You see an area of hyperintensity here in the right frontal lobe. You see a lot of mass effect here. Something's going on with the corpus callosum where you have a lot of low density crossing the corpus callosum. And probably this uh, hyperdense rim of solid tissue kind of uh, covering most of this area. Uh, but you definitely have this hemorrhage in here, which is a concerning sign. Here you see an MR from the same time. What you have is you have these flare uh, and hyperintense mass, which is crossing the corpus callosum, involving both frontal lobes, a little bit more so on the right, and then the area that was hyperintense on flare has this rim of dark on T2 and central hyperintensity. That's what hemorrhage looks like on MRI. Uh, here, this is a coronal flare. You're seeing the same thing. You see complete effacement of these frontal horns. You should have CSFs filled frontal horns there. Uh, this is a gradient weighted image. Uh, here, you, again, you have a lot of susceptibility associated with this mass. And even in the parts that didn't have gross hemorrhage on CT, you have scattered small areas of hemorrhage. Here you have pre and post contrast. So we have pre contrast on the right here. Uh, the, a little bit of intrinsic T1 hyperintensity from some of those blood products. On post contrast, you see this lesion is avidly enhancing. A lot of it is enhancing. The margins are poorly defined. You see it's very challenging to decide where the tumor actually stops here. And you have central areas of non enhancement or areas of necrosis. A coronal reformat simply gives you an idea of how aggressive this mass looks, how large it is, and how it's crossing the corpus callosum here. In this case, we're dealing with the glioblastoma. The glioblastomas are the grade 4 astrocytomas. These tend to be slightly older adults. They used to be called glioblastoma multiforme, but now that has been removed, and now they're just called glioblastomas, although people have tended to continue using the abbreviation GBM. These patients have very poor survival with a median survival of about 15 months. When you see the T2 edema around it, it's a combination of tumor and vasogenic edema. So we, we know in these patients there's a lot of infiltrating tumor that can't be resected and that ends up being uh, what causes them to, to have such poor survival. On imaging, as in this case, you have avid enhancement. Frequently you'll have hyperintensity on DWI or reduced diffusion. And you can definitely have hemorrhage and flow voids, uh, which show the neovascularity of the tumor. The treatment of these tumors is to resect as much of that enhancing component as possible, and then irradiate to the residual cavity. Um, the treatment is to give 60 gray and 30 fractions is the most common, and concurrent chemotherapy with Temidar is the most common treatment. A few other terms you need to know about astrocytomas. A gliomatosis cerebri used to be its own distinct entity where you have involvement of the white matter in uh, multiple lobes of the cerebral hemispheres. Now it's simply a descriptive term, so you're given a diagnosis and you can say there's a grade 3 astrocytoma with gliomatosis, for instance. These tend to be aggressive tumors with a poor prognosis. Gliosarcoma is a distinct lesion which has neoplastic gl glial cells as well as sarcomatous elements. They tend to have uh, more aggressive imaging features even than glioblastomas, uh, although they can often be undifferentiable. A key might be dural involvement or involvement of the adjacent bone, which is relatively rare with glioblastomas. Finally, oligoastrocytoma was previously a term used for tumors which had histologic features of both oligodendrogliomas and astrocytomas. That term has been deprecated as no longer used. And now, if a tumor is 1P19Q codeleted, it's an oligo. If it's 1P19Q intact, it's an astrocytoma. So those are very specific terms. Finally, I'll just give you a little bit of a summary of the astrocytomas. These are all contrast-enhanced images. You'll see the grade 2 astrocytoma that we saw here at the left temporal lobe. You can barely see it. Maybe there's a small cystic space associated with it. The grade 3 is a little bit larger, has a little bit more enhancement, a little bit more mass effect. The grade 4, you'll see intense enhancement, tons of mass effect, and as we remember, we had some hemorrhage there. Thanks for checking us out on this video. Up next, we'll have a review of the oligodendrogliomas.
If you enjoyed this video, check out some of our other videos. You can check out our website on learnerradiology.com or subscribe with a button here.